Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the JG Maker R1, an entry level 3D printer packed full of features like auto bed leveling, PEI magnetic build plates, dual Z axis motors, and much more. But is this R1 the perfect printer for you? Let's find out. Before we begin, this R1 was provided for me to review by JG Maker. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, which you can use to help support my channel channel at no additional cost to you. Let's get into it. The JG Maker R1 is an entry-level filament-based 3D printer with a print volume of 230 millimeters by 230 millimeters by 250 millimeters. The hot end is a standard 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle fed by a direct drive extruder. The extruder has dual gears feeding the filament, which provide plenty of grip to push the filament through without tearing into it. The nozzle has a max temperature of 260 degrees Celsius, which is good for materials such as PLA, ABS, and PE. ETG. The direct drive extruder is also great for flexible filaments like TPU. There are cooling fans on both sides of the hot end to cool down the prints after extrusion. I am a little underwhelmed by the fan speeds though. It is nice and quiet, but they aren't especially powerful. Around the back of the hot end is the induction sensor. This detects the metal build plates and acts as the Z-axis probe for auto bed leveling. There is no external probe, it is a proximity sensor. As someone who has broken plenty of probes in the past, I love the ease of use of this system. All three axes use rubber Z-slot wheels which ride on aluminum extrusions for the frame. The frame is very sturdy, and the dual Z-axis motors and lead screws help with that. The Z-axis motors are connected with a belt at the top, which ensures that they stay in sync even when one is turned manually. The X and Y axes are belt driven and they have easy to adjust belt tensioners on the sides. Also at the top of the R1 is the spool holder and filament runout sensor. This will pause the prints and alert you when you run out of filaments with a beeping alarm. You can then change the filaments and resume the prints. It keeps both the hot end and the bed temperatures at what they were before it paused. The hot end temperature might be an issue if you run out of filament during an overnight prints, as it could overcook the filament sitting in the hot end. But that's why you should use 3dprintlog.com to keep track of how much filament is remaining on your spools. Moving down to the print surface, we see the heated magnetic PEI bed. This build platform is textured, which provides plenty of grip on your prints, and is flexible, which allows for very easy print removal. The magnet is nice and strong, and I had no problems with print adhesion on this bed. An interesting thing about this bed is the complete lack of screws for adjusting the level. This is the first printer that I've had that has zero bed level adjustments. Instead, the printer relies entirely on the auto bed leveling. My bed varied quite a bit, more than three and a half millimeters from corner to corner. This means that the auto leveling has to do a lot of work to keep the nozzle at a consistent height. I would love to be able to adjust the bed to get it closer to level. However, not having springs and screws means the bed is very stable, and there's much less of a chance of the bed coming loose mid prints that some people have reported with other printers. To the right of the bed sits the 4.3 inch color touchscreen display. The menu options are nicely laid out and easy to use, and the touchscreens gave me no problem. The touchscreen is removable with a decently long cable if you wanted to move it or mount it somewhere else. At the base of the JG Maker R1 is the USB Type-B port for controlling the printer from your computer or Raspberry Pi, as well as the full-size SD card slot for storing G-code. There is also a small storage drawer, perfect for storing your tools for easy access. The SD card that comes with the printer includes a customized version of Cura with a pre-made profile for the JG Maker R1. The normal Cura does not have a built-in profile for the R1, but you can easily add it as a custom printer. You can also use any other 3D printing slicer like Prusa Slicer. Assembly was very easy, as the printer comes mostly assembled. You screw on the upright frame onto the base, attach the spool holder, screw on the touchscreen, and plug in all the cables. The one weird gotcha is that there is no physical and instruction manual provided with the R1. There is a detailed manual as a PDF on the included SD card, but if you don't know to look there, you could be really frustrated by that. Another point of frustration is that the manual does not include instructions on how to tighten the V-slot wheels. My extruder arrived very loose, and if I did not know how to adjust the eccentric nut, then you would never get successful prints. Once the printer is assembled, however, the leveling process is easy. The touchscreen walks you through the steps to adjust the nozzle offset, and then it will probe the bed for auto bed leveling. Easy. So let's talk about the prints. Overall, the quality is pretty high. I found the sweet spot at about 70 millimeters per second at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. When you try to push this printer, like this Captain America bust by Eastman, printed at 0.3 millimeter layer heights, you can see some artifacting where the hot end or extruder cannot quite keep up. However, at lower layer heights, like this 0.1 millimeter layer height version, those artifacts disappear. You can achieve some very nice looking prints on the JG Maker R1. 
The SD card came with seven sample G-code files, from the standard 3D Benchy and Bunny to the Maker Faire robot and a second spool holder. They all printed just fine and would give a solid first impression for new owners. This dice tower turned out very well. This tricolored filament from Tron XY really shines. It was printed at 0.15mm layer heights, and it took over 26 and a half hours to print. I did have some failures with the gate section. The printer has problems at the top of the pillars that caused two failed prints, but adjusting Z-hop in the slicer helped. Another beautiful print is this Moon City by Kaihai. I was very happy with how this turned out. This articulated dragon shows how well the PEI bed grips the prints. Each segment is printed individually, so even if a single segment failed, it would ruin the whole print but it turned out great. The last print that I'll highlight is this dragon dice holder. The layers are consistent with only the occasional Z-seam artifacts. One thing to note is that the JG Maker R1 does not support input shaping. This results in ringing, ghosting, or echoes at sharp corners, where the axis continues to vibrate. At modest print speeds, it is not extremely noticeable, but it is present. It's easy to see these on these vibration test models, but even on normal models, like the Captain America bust, you can see the echoes around the edges. I did have an issue where the screws holding the plastic bed corners came loose. I had to peel back the magnet in order to tighten the screws. It was easy to do, and it doesn't seem to have affected the bed at all. In addition to the filament runout sensor, the R1 also has power loss recovery. If the printer loses power mid-print, when the power is restored, it will ask you if you would like to resume printing. It then heats up, rehomes the X and Y axes, and resumes printing. This cube tested both the filament runout sensor and the power loss detection, and while you can see when those happen, a little defect is much better than a failing a day-long print. In conclusion, I enjoyed my time working with the JG Maker R1. It was easy to assemble after finding the instructions, and the touchless auto bed leveling made the printing experience very easy. The dual Z axis is stable, and I was very happy with the quality of the prints coming out of this entry level 3D printer. The touchscreen is responsive, and all the options are intuitive to use. While the R1 doesn't boast extremely fast speeds or giant build areas, it does seem like a reliable entry level printer. The JG Maker R1 sells for 250 US dollars, with sale prices sometimes dropping as low as 199 US dollars. This is an extremely compelling price, competing directly against some of the more popular entry-level printers. I had a good experience with the R1, and I could easily recommend this printer to someone looking to get into the 3D printing hobby. So thank you all for watching my review of the JG Maker R1. What features did you find most intriguing on this entry-level 3D printer? And what features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss any of my future reviews. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.